today I'm working with my girl Amber. Amber, you are down there in Florida and you got twenty thousand dollars to work with, right? Twenty thousand dollars to buy a rental property in twenty twenty two, right? A lot of other people, a lot of, a lot of other Floridians, Floridians, is that a word? I hope it's a word. I don't know. I made it up. But we got a lot of folk down there in Florida that are like, what? What's going on? How you going to buy a rental in Florida with 20 Gs? I'm going to help y'all out. That's what I do. Although you can't actually buy one in Florida, folks. That would be crazy. I mean, it costs almost 20 grand to fill up your friggin' SUV these days. No, no, no. Uh, we got to look out of state. We got to look at those cheap Midwestern cash flow markets. But if we travel long enough, we can find deals that will make sense at twenty grand. And I will help you put the whole thing together, including providing boots on the ground. Let's take a look at your deal, Amber. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, y'all. My name is James Wise, and I am here to help you guys invest in the Cleveland market, right? Cleveland. Cleveland's cool if you're looking for low-cost cash flow properties. Now, in the Cleveland area, we got a whole bunch of suburbs and many, many cities, right? So it's not just the city of Cleveland. The city of Cleveland is a, a small piece of the pie, right? We're talking a metro area that's got, you know, upwards of close to 4 million, all right? 4 million people. city of Cleveland only has like three to 400,000 of them. I think it's like 350, somewhere in there, right? Uh, so that's a very small thing. So uh, that's just the overall general name of the market. It's what gets the, the name recognition on a national scale. Uh, and that leads me to this particular city, Lorraine. Ohio. It's just west, like a half hour le uh, west of Cleveland. And I happen to actually like this city more than the actual city of Cleveland itself, right? The actual city of Cleveland itself, uh, despite Ohio being a red state, is, uh, you know, a little blue. You know what I'm saying? So Lorraine, much more red. Uh, political affiliations aside, y'all, if you're going to own rental properties, the bluer it gets, the more restrictions there are, the fewer landlord-tenant uh, rights you have. Now, we ain't talking like it's California or nothing. I'm not saying uh, Cleveland's out of control. I think it's very manageable. But uh, if you ever have the opportunity to push that pendulum uh, in a direction that benefits you a little bit more, you should take it, right? So Lorraine, uh, I think, is a super good hot spot, a nice little unknown spot, right? You don't even have to deal with the new uh, lead paint regulations that they got in Cleveland, right? These are the little differences and in the intricacies in the many parts to invest in in the Cleveland area, right? That's what I do. I help you guys figure that stuff out. I give you guys the insight uh, so you could go out there and invest in this market like you're a local, right? So this property, 1753 East 29th Lorraine, hit the market a couple weeks ago, right? It's been on the market like 15, 20 days, something like that. And this is a scenario, and I love scenarios like this. It's like the listing agent uh, is probably unfamiliar with rentals, and they completely phone this thing in, right? And that's amazing. They got this thing listed at 85 grand. We get one photo of the outside here. And then we get one photo of the outside in the backyard, all right? We get nothing else, and we know it's fully occupied. Guess how much it's renting for? Are you, are you waiting for me to tell you the if your guess was right or not? Well, guess what? I can't because this motherfucker didn't even tell me, right? They don't even fucking know, okay? You get a lot of these uh, listing agents that are unfamiliar with rental properties, okay? And they don't do, like, the necessary groundwork. They're just like, yeah... We got tenants in there. You're going to have to, uh, you know, schedule 48 hours in advance, reach out to them, try to get the actual rents. They don't even provide it. Uh, this might sound bad to you, but in fact, this is good. This is the kind of stuff I want to hear. This helps people like you, helps people like me, right? In this particular market, duplexes are going for a cool 100. Easy. Sometimes up to 130, okay? Now, they listed at 85. I think we could snag it at 80 because they're phoning it in, man. There's two kinds of people that are going to try to buy this house. People that want to live there and people that want rental uh, income checks, right? People like you. People that want to live there, 
it's a crappy like listing for them. There's no photos of what the inside looks like. Uh, and, you know, there's actual motherfuckers living there, right? It's very hard to move into a house when there's another motherfucker going to live there. You know what I'm saying? That makes things difficult for you, right? So they're in a haphazard, lazy type way, just trying to market it like you would just want to move in. They're like, yeah, come take a look at it. And if you like it, you could buy it, right? That's how most real estate is sold, right? Most houses are sold. Here's the house. Walk inside of it. Do you like it? Do you want to live there? If so, this is the price. Pay us, right? That's how real estate is sold. But real estate investors, we need to know the numbers. We need to know how much it's going to make, right? Is it a good investment, bad investment, things of that nature, right? This person hasn't provided that. So I think they're hoping that uh, or just assuming they're going to sell it to an owner-occupant, right? But here's the thing. Again, I said it before. I said it again. You can't live there if a motherfucker already living there, right? So there's two kinds of people that could buy this house, owner-occupants. Well, doesn't really work for them, right? Because there's people living there. Then that comes back to us, investors. You don't even give us the most basic information, which is how much is the rent? Come on. Uh, so uh, unprofessionally done by the listing agent, unprofessionally done by the seller. I assume it's a mom and pop seller who's really got no clue what's going on in the business. So you could assume your rents are probably going to be kind of low. Uh, the lack of photos on the inside doesn't bother me. Uh, it is hard, uh, especially in a post-COVID world, to get tenants to allow you to come inside and take pictures. And, like, look, I've been in this game a long time, folks. There's, like, no scenario where the inside of these units, uh, like, look amazing, okay? Here's the deal. These people are probably paying way below rent, probably, like, way below market rent, probably, like, five, six, five, six hundred bucks, somewhere in there, right? We're going to try to increase their rents up to market rent. Market rent is going to be about 800 in 2022, right? So that's 1600 just shy of 20 k is supposed to come in for the year, right? We will slowly increase them. We don't want to go way up, right, immediately because they'll probably move out. And there ain't no scenario where that unit don't look like crap and you don't got to drop at least 5 Gs totally redoing it, okay? I could guarantee you, based on the outside, the inside is not some fresh, amazing thing where when these tenants move out, we just sweep it up and it looks sweet. Not going to happen, okay? But all this is good for us because, again, duplexes in this area are going for upwards of 130. They got it listed for 85. I think we could pick it up at 80 because I think seller and listing agent, they're doing a crappy job at marketing this. So despite their ridiculously already low price, I think we could – just, you know, twist the knife a little harder. Pick it up for you for 80 Now, if we get rents up to market rent without a turnover, after fixing variable expense estimates with my team running everything for you, we're looking at making just over ten grand a year on average over the long haul, in my opinion. Go ahead and finance it. I know everybody's freaking out about interest rates going up, but, folks, in the last, like, 100 years, dude, like five Six percent interest rates. These are not that bad in the grand scheme of things. Your A APR and your credit cards like thirty friggin' percent, right? You put down twenty, bank kicks in the other sixty. We get this thing up to market. We're looking at like a thirty-two percent cash on cash return if we don't gotta do any turnovers by the time we get up to market rent, right? Five percent interest, six percent. Who gives a crap, folks? That's how you make money, right? You are possibly buying this with very uh, very undervalued price points based upon the low rent, the lack of professionalism with the way that it's being sold. You slowly increase the rents using my team to handle all of that on your behalf, and you control a nice asset in a nice area, a nice red state, and you only had to put down 20 k The deal is a no-brainer, folks. Stop crying about interest rates, and let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.